Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can dust for fingerprints using some a black powder, using magnetic dusting powder, and then also some other uh, materials that can be just found in, in just general household items. So I'm going to start with showing you what we're gonna be using as our evidence. So we've got just a metal tin, plastic water bottle, and an oddly shaped face mask. Uh, and these are going to be allowing us to show how you can collect uh, fingerprints from various types of surfaces. Now I'll show you first how we can use magnetic powder. Uh, magnetic powder, number one, you don't want to use on anything metal. Uh, it will make it very difficult because the magnet itself is actually going to attach to the metal evidence, and we don't want that. So for magnetic powder, I'm not going to use a, I'm not going to use that on evidence that has any metal components. Again, the magnet from the wand is actually going to want to attach to our evidence. That would be bad. So I'm going to use a plastic water bottle. So first, uh, we're gonna create the evidence. And this just makes it so that when you're practicing, you can have a pretty uh, decent bit of evidence to get your fingerprints off of. So to make fingerprints, it helps to get your finger a little bit oily, forehead, side of your nose, chin, tends to have a lot of oils on your face. Um, lotion on your hands actually helps as well. So I'm just going to place gently my finger on this water bottle and just create a fingerprint. Now you probably can't see that, that's a latent print. Latent means it's 2D, but generally invisible. And so what I'm going to do is use my magnetic powder and we're going to develop this print. By develop, I mean we're processing it so it makes it more visible. We can then lift the print or simply photograph it so that we can send it off for analysis. So here's our water bottle. I have my magnetic powder. Just show this over this so you can see the contrast a little bit better. So this is magnetic powder. It's just in this little vial. Um, this just keeps it contained. And then we have a magnetic wand. This wand has a slip on the outer side and then the magnet's actually here at the base. The slip stays on the metal wand um, and that just allows us to be able to uh, basically direct the magnetic powder a little bit better. So I'm going to pick up the magnetic powder with the magnet that's inside of this applicator wand and then you want a good amount of powder on here, and I would probably have a little bit more than this. And you're just going to drag it slowly across your fingerprint. Now, you don't want the applicator itself to touch the fingerprint. You just want the powder to touch the fingerprint. And I can start seeing, I can start seeing that fingerprint slowly developing. And again, I'm probably, I would probably use a bit more powder than I have here. Um, but you can start seeing it slowly coming about and maybe difficult to see in the camera. All right, then to release the magnetic powder, you simply return it back to the vial and then you pull up on the magnet portion and that allows the powder to drop back down. Now it's a fairly easy cleanup and I can just reinsert my magnetic wand and then I'm ready for the next piece of evidence. Now that's the dusting part using magnetic powder. Now we want to lift this print. This is a slightly irregular surface um, because it's a little bit curved, but I think it's, it's probably smooth and flat enough that I can use standard lifting tape. So this is lifting tape. It has these little tabs. Each tab is just a different piece of tape. You can also use masking tape. Clear masking tape works just fine. So for lifting tape, pull off in one section. You're going to apply it slowly from one corner and then smooth over as you go. And again, this water bottle does have a little bit of a curve. Um, and so this will sort of show you the pros and cons of using lifting tape on a curved surface. Generally, we would use something else, something like Microsil. And I'll show you some of those options a little bit later. Once that peels off, it will take the print with. We want to put that on a standard lifting card. Slide it down. Again, we want to remove the air bubbles and then we have our nice transferred print. So on the other side, this is our evidence, uh, evidence incident log. So we're going to sketch out what this evidence looked like or where, the, where this print was on our evidence. We're going to jot down our information, the case number, date and time, agency, the person who lifted it, um, the fingerprint number or lifted number, the location of the lift, and again, the sketch orientation. This goes then into an evidence bag, uh, to maintain chain of custody, we want to seal that evidence bag, fill it out, and sign our name along the seal. All right, next I'm going to show you how to use dusting powder. 
Now on dusting powder, I'm going to use this metal tin as our evidence. Again, I'm going to create a nice fingerprint on here as our practice print. Um, and in the right lighting, you might be able to see that fingerprint. It is still considered latent because it is uh, difficult to see, and so we want to make it a little bit more visible. So I'm going to use black dusting powder um, and a camel hair brush. The key with these brushes is the bristles be very soft and very fine. Now you're just going to apply a little bit of that black dusting powder to your brush. Get some of the excess off. Um, you actually don't want too much powder. A lot of times people add way too much powder. Um, and you're just going to gently brush across your print. Okay, if you need a little bit more black powder, that's fine. And it helps to do this in slightly circular motions, um, kind of going along the pattern of the ridges as best as you can. If you go really hard back and forth, left and right, um, it tends to smudge the print. So just gentle strokes. As soon as you start seeing that print uh, slightly developing, again, this may be difficult to see in the camera, we've got a nice print developing right there. Now we can use that lift tape. I'll show you using the masking tape this time. You just take off a little section of masking tape. And I'm again just going to place it along my fingerprint that's now dusted and then smooth it over until it covers the print entirely. You want to remove any air bubbles. Then you're going to lift this off in one easy motion. And now the print has transferred onto my tape. And again, we're going to put this smoothing from one side over to the other onto our evidence card. Um, so now you see a nice print that's been dusted and lifted, and now this can be sent off for fingerprint analysis. We would obviously want to fill out the front of the incident card, put this into an evidence folder, sign, seal, and deliver it to our uh, fingerprint analysis unit. All right, the next thing I want to show you is how you can do this with some basic household items. So again, I'll use the metal tray here. And I'm going to show you how you can do this with uh, cornstarch. Again, I will create a new fingerprint that we're going to be developing. And so now I have just plain old household kitchen cornstarch. Um, and this has like a nice kind of powdery texture to it. And so I have some here. Um, again, I'm going to just use a, a brush. This is probably one that has a little black residue on it from the dusting powder, but that's okay. Um, you could even use a makeup brush for this. A blush brush would work out just fine. Usually they're fine enough bristles or soft enough bristles that you can do this. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit. I actually got a little bit of dusting, black dusting powder in here, so it's kind of tur turning my cornstarch a little gray. That's all right. You get the idea. And then we're just going to brush this around our print, get off the excess powder, don't want too much powder on there. A lot of times people actually end up putting too much powder on there. And again, just gentle strokes around your print. Once you can see it starting to develop, then we're ready to lift it. And again, I'll use the masking tape um, or the packing tape because it um, does actually work really well. And, and most people have this at home. You could use scotch tape. Actually, I'll use some scotch tape. Um, so you could just use scotch tape. And again, this is something a lot most people have just around their home. Um, you want to be careful when you are touching this. Um, I'm actually creating prints on the tape as I pick it up. So if I just do this with it, I will create a print there. Obviously, you don't want to think that that's your evidence. I would generally be using gloves for this. You never want to um, have bare hands touching evidence because you are actually adding fingerprints everywhere. Um, but I'm just showing you this as a demo right now. You're going to smooth this over your print in one direction, smooth that over, and then peel it off in one smooth direction. It would have transferred your print onto there. Now, because this powder is, is kind of white, I'm going to actually put this on a contrasting piece of paper. So I'm gonna put this on a black piece of paper, and that will allow me to see the print a little bit better. Okay, so there's my print on this black paper. And again, this would go onto an evidence card, an incident card, this would go into an evidence bag, signed, sealed, delivered to the, the fingerprint analysis unit. I can do the same thing with makeup. This is just from like the Dollar Tree. It's um, just face powder and an eyeshadow brush or a blush brush would work just fine. Again, I'm going to create a new print and clean off my evidence. I'm going to create a new print. 
and show you that you can also use something as simple as just a little bit of makeup um, to help you with this practice activity. Um, with this, you actually want to get a good amount of powder. Um, so you want to get those granules kind of up a little bit. Now I can see there's a good amount of those granules. And that's what I'm going to use. So I kind of fill up that powder onto the brush as best as I can. And again, just in smooth motions back and forth until you start seeing that print becoming a little bit more visible. Use a little more powder if you need it. And the idea is you're being very, very gentle with this print. It doesn't take much to smudge a fingerprint. Okay, and so now you can see that print is developing quite nicely. And same thing, I'm going to use my lifting tape. I'll use the scotch tape again, because it's easy. And again, be wary of where you are putting your fingers. Um, when you're at home practicing this, you obviously probably don't have gloves. And so I'm showing you how to do this with Oh, getting your fingerprints on the evidence as best as possible. Though obviously we would be wearing gloves if we were doing this for real. All right, pry up in one direction. This is kind of a light powder, so I wanna use a contrasting color paper and then I smooth this down. Okay. And then that would go into our card, our incident card, and tape to the back, into the evidence bag, signed, sealed, delivered. All right, so again, you could use just, this is plain old face powder. You could use blush, eyeshadow would work really well. And again, just a standard makeup brush, as long as it has very soft bristles, it should work out just fine. I'm gonna show you one more way um, that we can get prints off of unusual surfaces. This plastic bottle was actually considered an unusual surface. Lifting tape is not ideal for this. It's got some rounded edges. So I'm gonna show you if you were trying to get a fingerprint off of this bottle or in this case, I have a weird um, mask that has lots of curves and shapes to it. So just like before, we would want to dust this print. So let's create a print on here. I'm going to dust that with my black powder. The black powder tends to, I think, kind of look the best and you can see it develop really easily. So there's my print developing right here. All right, that looks pretty good. And now I can't add this tape because it's a really curved surface. I'm gonna get lots of creases and bubbles and things. So instead we can use um, something called Microsil. Well, we don't have Microsil here at school, so we're gonna go ahead and use just school glue. If you have the blue gel Elmer's glue, that actually works the best, but this will work out just fine. So I'm coating this with glue and you can use as little or as much glue as you'd like. Um, the idea is that you don't want to actually smudge the print, so you just want this to slowly layer over that print. And so I'm going to continue doing this until the entire print is coated with glue. And then I'm going to let it dry completely. Okay, so I'm going to continue coating this. It would be ideal if this was actually flat so that the glue just stays on top and does not run, run down the side like it's doing here. And I'm just going to, again, kind of keep coating this. I'm running out of glue. <laughs> um, just keep coating this until the entire print is coated. Um, this isn't quite there, but you get the idea. Then leave this off to the side. And then eventually it will have come completely dry. So this is one that I've done a, a while ago, and I let it dry. I had created the print, I dusted it, and then I applied the glue to it. And now I'm going, I let it dry, and I'm just going to pry it up. You want to be very careful with this so you don't accidentally smudge the print. Um, and again, I would normally be wearing gloves doing this, but I'm showing you how you can practice this at home. And you're just going to pry it up. And as you can see, the print actually transfers on to that tape. There is a bit resi of residue here. This is not Microsil. This is just standard Elmer's glue. But the idea is you can see this print transferring onto your glue. Get a new card. There's a new card. And then we're going to transfer this over onto here. And it usually sticks. We also would want to make sure that this um, does not get dislodged so we could actually tape this down to prevent it from moving around. Okay, you just want to make sure you're not putting anything over the actual print itself. And so then now there's our transferred print onto the glue. Again, this kind of simulates what Microsil would do. And, and that's it. So those are the ways that we can do dusting at home. Um, using just standard supplies. Hopefully that helped clarify a few of the dusting techniques.